Thank you for listening and welcome to the Life Podcast, a proud member of the Eventide Entertainment Podcast Network. I'm your host, Don Smith. Mike Shea is guest co-host for the week, and we are joined over the telephone by comedian Chris Mohan to talk about family and comedy. If you enjoy the show, like and follow the Life 106.9 on Facebook and Don Smith Comedy on Twitter, or tune in live on Wednesdays from noon to 2 p.m. on WWSU 106.9 FM, or you can stream the show live at WWSU1069.org. The brutal presence overwhelms me. The brutal presence overwhelms me. All right, it is Wednesday. It is noonish. I forgot to bring this all the way down to me, so I'm just like reaching for the microphone at this point. <laughs> I'm your host, Don Smith. Uh, you're listening to the Life Radio Show. Uh, my guest co-host for the week is is none other than the amazing, the fabulous Mike Shea. Fabulous, fabulous <laughs> from from the Even Tide Entertainment Podcast Network. And Mike talks funny, and I think that's the name of your podcast too. It is. Yeah, it's it's, it's <laughs> life mimicking art, art mimicking life. Yeah, see, that was pretty funny right there. Yeah, right. Yeah, I'm, I'm hysterical. I, don't, I should say words. Just, just, just random say words. words. Just say random things in the, yeah. into a microphone. Bowling yeah, ball. You're bound work. Yeah, people just laugh. That's fantastic. <laughs> I'd have never thought of bowling ball. <laughs> uh, anyway, how have you been, sir? It's It's been a little while since you've been in, like a couple yeah. weeks or something yeah, like that. I, know, I don't right? <laughs> God, I'm in here a lot lately. No, yeah. I'm good, man. How about you? Well, I, I've been I've been lazy lately, so I haven't been booking you know good guests. I just keep no, <laughs> oh! <laughs> no. I, we, oh! we actually have a good show coming up today. We have the fabulous uh, Mike Shea in here, absolutely. Uh, hoping to get a call here in a bit from uh, Chris Mohan and uh, what else? Aaron Phillips is going to be coming on in the next hour to talk about the uh, King talk of the about Oregon his, district. Uh, yeah, the, the, the uh, mayor, mayor, mayor of the, of the Oregon, Oregon district. district. Yeah. And he, he's going to tell us about his uh, his street show in front of oh, Feathers it's Vintage back. Clothing. It's, it's coming, coming back. It's coming back this Friday. <laughs> is it really? Is it really? Already? Yeah, it is. And if it's, you know, it's we- not really weather permitting. If the weather's bad, they'll do it inside the store. But See, that's if the you've one I've ever never been understood. There, if you've ever been <laughs> to yeah. Feathers, there is no room in that that's, store. But when I heard there was a comedy show at Feathers on the street, I was like, I could see that working. And then when he said, yeah, well, if the weather's bad, we do it inside. I just kind of looked at it and was like, how? Well, he I, he used to do it inside the store. I, and, I've Because I've been in Feathers several times. My brother yeah. loves shopping in there. And uh, we went in there for we went in there Christmas shopping one day. I remember walking around looking like, how the hell <laughs> do they do does a Aaron do a comedy here? show in here? I can't move right now. now. Granted, I'm a large individual, but still. Like, yeah, it's, <laughs> they move a lot of stuff. I I guess, yeah. Because he, he actually, when he first started them, he was doing them out in the back, behind oh. the, behind the store. But there was uh, there were a few neighbor complaints. <laughs> I don't They're out there saying you know, curse words. I, yeah, I don't know why. I mean, <laughs> you live, surely a bunch of stand-up comics having a big party in your backyard can't be that bad. I but, mean, uh, it's, it's going to be entertaining for one. But, like, you live, you live in, in downtown Dayton. Like... This can't be the worst thing going on outside your apartment, right? right I would now. think not. Maybe that's what it was. Maybe the people calling to complain is, you know, they were they were back there ODing and it kept waking them up. <laughs> you know, this comedy show's worse than Narcan. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I had, had, a, <laughs> had had a couple good shows this past weekend. The uh, yeah. Cry for Help shows at Wiley's Saturday yeah. night. Uh, was they were a lot of fun. They were a lot Scotty of fun. Mays, that's is Dale on that one? Oh uh, yeah, Dale, Dale books and hosts. Uh, Dale Cry Blomquist, for help. Scotty Mays. Who else is on that? Who's uh well the first the first show Saturday night, uh Scotty Mays headline, the second show uh Ranson Carr oh, headline. Man. And they had music from uh, Catfish Carr. Which, of course. Uh, yeah, good good blues tunes <laughs> and uh it was, it was a lot of fun. That's I good. I did ten minutes on both shows. So. Look at you. You've yeah. been going up a lot yeah. more lately. Uh, a couple times anyway. Yeah. It's it's about time. Well, you know, you don't go up for six months. Sooner or later, everybody starts to wonder, like, yeah, well, are you what done? happened? No, yeah. no I, I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no one's ever really like yeah. they can say they're done. I'm, I'm done but... after every show because oh, I yeah. actually, I actually stopped doing comedy twice Saturday night after the first show, and then again after the second <laughs> show. I was like, I'm done with this. Not doing, but this no, they, they're great shows. They, they really were. Uh, I, I'm really. Uh, 
Nick Taylor. I don't know if you've seen Nick Taylor go up in a while. When when he every, first, I see him every Monday at Ollie's. Well, yeah, there you go. So you know how much it, when he first uh, came around in the area and started doing comedy, I thought he was okay. Mm-hmm. But I I really hadn't seen him up for a while because I haven't been out to many shows. And he he went up uh, both both shows Saturday night and blew me away. He he's got some great he's, stuff. He's so good. He's fantastic. I I was I was very impressed. It's the man bun. No, re, I, I was impressed regardless of the man bun. No, I'm because saying, the, I'm saying was, the man bun is the source of power. Oh, Whatever, it can't be. It's like it an antenna. Be. I know because I don't want to admit that, but no, it, it can't be because I'm, I'm never going to have enough hair <laughs> so to have a man bun. So you're saying the but, man bun is like a comedy antenna? Yeah, he's uh, okay, he's, okay. He's, he's, he's got a, he's got an antenna hidden in there, and someone's feeding him funny, and it's going in and into his brain, and that's where he's getting it from. I'm going to, I'm next Phillips time, next time is. he's up there, I'm going to have to check. I'm just going to have to run on stage and just undo his man bun real quick and see if that antenna is up there because there, it's, there, was there could one be day something to that. He came back from a vacation with his girlfriend that I guess she had braided his hair. So to see him walk into Ollie's sans man bun, but with like just these Star Wars Jedi braids going down, it was, it was pretty awesome. Sorry, I, I just noticed they have the they have the the light for the phone covered up. So if a call oh. came in, I wouldn't know because it that's wouldn't be helpful. flashing like it's supposed to. That's be. That's the so opposite of helpful. It, well, it is, it is. But that's <laughs> you know that that's okay. We'll we'll press on. We'll press on. You know, even if the phones don't work, because I mean, what's the likelihood of that Meh. happening? Right. We've never had technical difficulties in the studio here at no. all. So <laughs> I've never been on a show that wasn't actually broadcasting at one point. No. Right, right, right. <laughs> well, I think we've always broadcasted somehow, so far as I know. I oh, mean, really? It, we, we've had issues where we couldn't play oh, that's the right. songs. We've yeah. had issues where it wasn't broadcasting over the, the uh, online feed. But uh, okay. we've always gone out to the to the fantastic handful of listeners we have. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Please so, keep listening. So what's, what's going on new with you? Since- Ooh, man, a lot, really. Um, we uh, Well, I mean, as you know, you were a part of it. I just finished uh, shooting on a, on a short film called Monarch that yeah. uh, uh, Don and several other great comedians here in town. Uh, and a few okay ones. And a few okay ones, <laughs> uh, myself included. Uh, then there's me. It uh, helped... Uh, Helped work on it. We, we I cut together kind of a condensed five minute version for a short film uh, festival at my alma mater down in South Carolina, which uh, that's next week. I'll be going down for that, and then we've got a twenty minute version that I'm editing and scoring right now that is going to be premiering at a film premiere event at the Neon in downtown Dayton. They're awesome. letting us rent it out and just kind of do what we want with it for the night, as long as we don't break anything. No, yeah, don't don't break yeah. the theater. <laughs> they specifically said like you have to leave it the way you found it, and I'm like, well, can you not clean it before I come in? That right. way, I have an excuse. <laughs> <laughs> that way, you don't have to clean a thing. But that's, that's coming up yeah. uh, Thursday, May 17th. We're we're putting together a trailer and posters. We're working on all that stuff right now. After I submitted the short short version to the film festival, I kind of took a break. I didn't I didn't touch anything. Because I had speed edited this film together over the course of like four days. Right. And so after I got done with that, I was like, all right, I'm done. I'm not going <laughs> to touch it again for a week. So. All right. Well, as you can tell, we're, we're getting the call. So I can let's, see it, yeah. Let's see. Uh, this is the life. You're on the air. Hey, how's it going? This is Chris. All right. Hey, this is Don Smith. Uh, Chris Mohan joining us on Hi. the air. How's it going? All right. You hear us Okay. Yeah, can you can you guys hear me? Okay. Yeah, we can hear you yep. fine. We just we, every now and then we have some uh, you know technical issues here in the <laughs> uh, the fantastic uh, studio. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I hear you. <laughs> the, DIY, the DIY world, right? <laughs> yeah, there you go, there you go. I got to yeah. wear all we we all have to wear several hats when we come into the studio to broadcast. So. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know that game. Yeah, that's that's usually the fun of. Uh, uh, of doing DIY shows is sometimes you're you're the door guy, the performer, and the sound tech all at once. Yep, there you go. Well, we we have a technician here, and he's usually a very busy man, so I try not to bother him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, how's it going? You you have a couple of shows coming up here in the area. Yeah, we're going to be uh, touring through through the Midwest, uh, sort of the conclusion of the tour that Andrew Frank and I have been doing since January. Um, called the Anti-Imperialism Nationwide Comedy Takeover. Uh, so 
Yeah, That's a great title. <laughs> it's a mouthful. Yeah. <laughs> it sums up everything that we're that we talk about on stage. So <laughs> Okay. Well it's good you can sum it all up in one phrase like that. So. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. Um yeah, so so we've been we've just been on the road since January, uh touring all across. Uh we were we we went down south into the into the Midwest a little bit, um, and then we were just recently in the Northeast. So we're concluding the tour uh, in the uh, with Muncie, Dayton, Indianapolis, and Edwardsville, Illinois. Um, so, that does kind of sound appropriate, like the end of things. Just in, <laughs> it's a good place to, to just end it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it has a nice finality to it. Yeah. You know? Four, if, if there are four cities that you want to end some stuff in, that's that's the place to go. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Lot- yeah, I, I like Dayton. I, I yeah, uh, I've been through Dayton a few times. And it's always been uh, uh, they've always been fun shows. Yeah, where's your show at coming through? Uh, it's it's at the South Park Tavern on South Park, uh, April nineteenth. Okay. Yeah, I, I yeah. couldn't remember exactly where it was. I knew it was it was one of those. I haven't been there in a while, I don't think. But yeah, the last time I was there uh, was in September, and uh, something happened with their pizza oven, and I was and it was like whoa, and they had to fix their pizza oven. Uh, but the, I, I think I was talking to the owner, and he was he was telling me how much like some of the contractors charged them, and I was like, oh my god, this is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I can imagine. I can definitely. Yeah. <laughs> we had we had to put a uh, we had to put a grease trap in the uh, in, in at Wiley's. Uh, yeah. About a month or so ago, and it uh, yeah, it was not a, it was not a fun bill to have to pay. Yeah, it's one of those things that where where I think uh, some people like, especially artists uh, that come into certain venues, and you know, it's like, uh, oh, why are you taking? 30% of the door, or why are you charging me $150 to, to you know, perform at your venue or or what have you? And it's like, well, that kind of keeps the building there, uh, right. you know, uh, so maybe maybe we should take that into account. But I think sometimes you forget because, you know, you're on the road so much or you're just excited about trying to turn your art into a full-time job that, it just escapes your mind that other people also have expenses just like you do. <laughs> oh, yeah. and how? <laughs> <laughs> right. you know, yeah, like I definitely used to do that when I, uh, a couple of years ago when I uh, was touring through. It was like, I just don't understand why they're, they, they're taking 30% of the door and the drink money and the drink money. This yeah. is ridiculous. Those, Completely cr- those crooks. <laughs> <laughs> That door money's mine. No, but. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, yeah, it's just some, uh, some stuff that, you know, it's like, oh, yeah, the grease trap can go out, and that can cost a couple hundred bucks. And, oh, I uh, wish. <laughs> yeah, well, a couple hundred is on the low end, I guess. Oh, I yeah, it was, it was a couple thousand <laughs> on that one. Because <laughs> they had to put a new one in. They had to put the whole thing in and dig through the concrete floor for – about four hours worth of jackhammering, so it was uh, it was a pleasant Oof. day. Yeah. <laughs> Oof. Yeah. That sounds that sounds pretty intense. Intensive. Uh, yeah, I, I just moved into a new house in December. Not a new house. It was, you know, the, the house existed. We just it, my my landlord like renovated it, and it's uh, and me and my fiance kind of went into it being like, okay, well, you know that we're gonna we're we're kind of testing the house for the first couple months to make sure, like, things are operational. Uh, and, you know, like, the first couple of months of moving it anywhere, it, we, we ended up uh, figuring out, because of all the snow that we experienced in the first two months of living here, that mm-hmm. there is... Uh, <laughs> there's definitely a leak in the chimneys uh, that we had that we got fixed. <laughs> and, uh, and there was also, like, our gutters were clogged with the tennis ball. Don't know how that got there. Uh, that almost yeah. sounds like sabotage right there. I don't know how do you so accidentally, many either that or you're just really talented to hit that tennis ball up into the gutter like that. That's yeah. Cool. It's a, how did that, how did that even get up there? But, but our landlord has, uh, <laughs> one of the guys that, that fixes up the house properties for our landlord is like, 
he's just the sweetest guy. And he comes over and he was like, well, uh, your chimneys are leaching, so I'm going to go in there and fix your chimney and then redo part of your roof. Oh, also, there's a tennis ball in the gutter. So <laughs> you don't want that back? Explain why there's bubbles in your wall. <laughs> is that a double fault? I don't, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I, I think so. I think yeah. it is. It's... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yep, the ball boy missed that one. He, did. <laughs> he yeah, didn't exactly. run fast enough. <laughs> went, went way out. Went yeah, way out. Yeah. So, yeah, you're uh, not going to see that in Wimbledon. Yeah, that's <laughs> probably not. Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, hey, back to comedy. <laughs> uh, how, how long have you been uh, performing comedy? Uh, about 12 years. Uh, I'm actually, it's going to be 13, uh, not this coming Sunday, but the following Sunday. So April 15th, it'll be, it'll be 13 years. Wow. And what, yeah. what got you started? Was this, I always like to find out how people get started because mine was just like, hey, let me do this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and other people are like, well, my friend said do this. So. <laughs> It's it's a little it's a little of both. Um, I was uh, I was sixteen, so uh, yeah, just about sixteen, and uh, so there was just a high school talent show coming up, and I I have a lot of friends uh, that that are in like bands or they you know they were just like acoustic singer songwriters in high school, so they told me that I should try out for this talent show, and I was like I don't have a talent that I can show people, uh, so. They were, you know, my buddy Derek was like, well, do those jokes. Like, you have these funny stories about your mom and your family and stuff. Like, go and go and do that. Uh, so I went home and I wrote eight note cards worth of uh, worth of different jokes. Uh, and I went up and I auditioned, and they basically told me, like, I got in, but they told me, like, there's, uh, like, you can't win the talent show. Like, you can't be part of the contest because we have nothing. We, we don't have a barometer for comedy. Uh, like you're the only person that's doing it, uh, so in my head I'm like you're, you're like only you're the only person stupid enough to do comedy. Right, right. Uh, <laughs> like, yep, nobody else, else would like, do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everybody else is like you know singing songs and dancing and doing uh, you know theatrical renditions, and you're up there being like, here's my thoughts and opinions and feelings that are attached to who I am as a human being. Yep, laugh at them <laughs> and make me feel terrible <laughs> or good. Yeah. Yeah, that's... validate me, please. <laughs> you know. So yeah, it does take a special kind of idiot to do comedy. I think. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. that's basically the same backstory as me. It'll be it'll be thirteen years for me in October, and I got started doing high school talent shows, and yeah. it's it's yeah. They yeah. tell they tell you pretty much right right up front, like we're not we're you're probably not going to win if you enter this. We still want <laughs> you to do it, but you're probably yeah. not going to win. Yeah, we still yeah. want you to embarrass yourself. Right. So, I, I mean, I just did, like, I, I did my, uh, they asked me to do three five-minute sets in between some of the band changes, uh, which was fine. And I didn't have 15 minutes. Uh, I, like, I, I kind of had 10 minutes. Uh, I definitely didn't have 15. And, you know, we had some time, and I was trying to figure out, like, what am I going to do? Like, I don't, you know, like, I don't have another five minutes uh, of material, so I just went on stage and just kind of recounted this conversation I had with my dad about going to to school for graphic design and how much of a disappointment it was for him <laughs> that I was going like this non traditional route. Uh, and uh, yeah, and it, it, so I did. I just did that for with the Indian accent for four and a half minutes. <laughs> and, uh, it's, you, it's the only standing ovation I've ever received in 13 years of comedy. Is, oh, that's is that. funny. That's it. <laughs> so you, you you are Indian, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm, I was born in India. I moved here when I was eight. Oh, okay. Oh, well, my, okay. my wife is Indian, so I, I know me being not Indian, I know about uh, their disappointment. <laughs> and going yeah. a non-traditional I'm route. glad you cleared that up I yeah. thought he was just telling a joke in an Indian accent and I'm like that's yeah. racist yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, but yeah it's not well I, I do because it's my father-in-law right. so. right. <laughs> but just for me to hear like yeah no I was at a talent show and I did a joke in an Indian accent and got a standing ovation it's like I have questions <laughs> yeah, no. yeah exactly yeah, I uh, that's the 
thing is like I haven't done I haven't done a joke with the accent in a in a few years because it's just not me and I and I think I uh, what I uh, essentially what I found out about that was uh, people were people were laughing at uh, at the wrong thing like the yeah. the accent is not the joke uh, the accent is just a it, it's it's a it's a character right so it it does add to the element of the joke but I but I don't think that like I never thought the accent was the joke, and I, and I know people ended up thinking the accent was the joke because they would never say anything about uh, the the social commentary of the joke itself, or uh, you know if it was something clever or if it connected things in the right way, they would always come up and be like, "That accent is great." And I was yeah, like, God, damn it! Because <laughs> I, I actually have one where I talk about. Well, I don't use it anymore because my wife said stop. But uh, <laughs> but yeah. I, I talk about the initial meeting with my in laws the first time we met, and yeah. it was it was a, a rather rough scene with uh, uh, my mother in law climbing up my back trying to hit me, uh, my, <laughs> and my my father in law of course he's running around screaming at the top of his lug, lungs. Oh. Let's all calm down. But when I first started doing that joke, I did the accent. But to me, they were laughing more at this big fat white guy doing an Indian accent and they were laughing, <laughs> laughing at the fact that everybody's almost hysterical and he's hysterically yelling, calm down. So, <laughs> which to me being that uh, being in a public place as it was, that was the joke. <laughs> right. The, the, yeah, the chaos that's created in the situation. Right. Uh, yeah, that's, that's all. Yeah. That's the funniest part about the whole thing is he just wants to have a good time. <laughs> <laughs> yep, it was uh, it was it was fun. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's it's. Uh, I've been talking about uh, you know uh, a lot of the political divide that's been going on in uh, in the country. At the, you know, and uh, my fiance's family, a, a majority of them are are, um, are conservatives, so that's not really. Like their politics should not align with mine, and I should not be someone that they should want to hang out with. Uh, right. And I and I talk about her uncle, and and that's the whole thing. Is the whole thing is like there is chaos created by this this vaguely political conversation, uh, and, and then him trying to come back, and you know he he does redeem himself, and he, you know it's a story. It's it's this story of redemption is essentially how I look at it. But it is it is that moment of chaos that everybody kind of enjoys, uh, you know, is is like when everything erupts and we're like, what happened? Who said what? And how do we arrive here? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. but in the moment, it's just like I don't, I don't, I want to get out of chaos. <laughs> yeah, there's a, you definitely want to leave that moment, <laughs> and it's like, yeah. yeah, later on you can look back and say, okay, that was pretty funny. But, <laughs> right, but right. when you're in the midst yeah. of it, yeah, it's a, it can be a nightmare. Yeah, I I, I was talking to her about uh, like we were we were in Columbus, we were uh, you know hanging out with them, and she I think went to uh, the basement of the or the restroom or something, and and all this happened in like the time span of like two three minutes, and, and it like blew up, uh, and her uncle goes out in the garage, you know. Uh, Saying, saying some uh, political things, and then he came back to kind of be like, oh, no, I messed up because I said something really ignorant. And, you know, he kind of makes a, he, he makes a really crass joke uh, as a way to kind of break the ice of, of <laughs> break the tension, right? And, you know, it's like, to me, it's like, I get what, I get what he was trying to do, you know, and I don't fault him for, for trying to do it because he's a sweet guy. And I was telling her about it, and she goes, man, I can't believe I missed that. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and, and I was like, uh, I don't know, man. Like it seemed, it seemed to kind of disturb your aunt and your cousin a little bit. Like, like your aunt and cousin were pretty disturbed and embarrassed by this whole situation. And she was just like, man, that's one of the funniest things I've heard. And it took me, you know, like it took me a little while. Uh, I don't, I don't think I'm one of those comics that, um, uh, can can experience something that day and then just immediately put it on stage. Yeah, it, it I takes was. Me, it takes me a couple of days to like process it and figure out what I need to do. 
so eventually, like, I, and, I, and I did ask her, I was like, can I do this thing? You know, can I tell that story on stage? Because I, cause I feel like it's important to kind of know that, you know, like, just because he's conservative doesn't mean he's a bad person. Because uh, I think that's the, that's the whole point of this story. Uh, and there is the element of chaos that I think everybody experiences. <laughs> yeah, yeah. See, all, all that happened to me before I actually started going up on stage. That was before I started oh, on man. this uh, comedy path. So, but it was still there. It was still fresh in my mind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, it's but, an experience that doesn't leave you, right? <laughs> oh no, that 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 one does not. Now, my it, I mean, of course, cu- coming out of that after we finally got out of the situation and got away from it of course my wife's really upset and she just right. she, she she looks at me she's like i'm kind of surprised you're still here and i just kind of chuckled and i said well it's nothing nothing worse than some of my family reunions have been. <laughs> <laughs> like, my my dad's side of the family's from the hills in tennessee we've been through some odd ones so i mean i, I bet one time my my grandfather ended up in the hospital because uh one of his nephews uh broke several of his ribs over a barmaid so <laughs> so you never know what's going to happen when Memories. family's involved so. yeah exactly <laughs> yeah um uh, family fa- family drama i feel like is is that that's the thing is it i feel like if you can take those personal moments and try to apply some sort of bigger lesson to them it just it, you know I think it's easier for people to swallow political comedy or or, or any uh, like idea based comedy that that sort of has a belief system attached to it uh, because because they lived it right and, it, and right. It, but the beliefs the beliefs and the and these ideas and the realm of politics seems so so much larger but kind of relating it to to this to, to the human experience of like you know family drama or relationship drama or, or what have you if you can tie that back and and that's that's hard in and of itself and you know yeah. uh, well, th- those it, are universal truths as far as the family <laughs> drama those everybody is going to run yeah. into those <laughs> yeah uh, yeah it's, it, no nobody comes out and it's just like oh my family's great we've never mm-hmm. fought that person is a liar right so <laughs> yeah or 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 needs to go see a therapist about unlocking some things in their head <laughs> yeah because you know? they, they've blocked a lot out <laughs> Yeah, yeah. There, there are some memories that are that are being kept secret by your brain. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm going to have to do the comedy rundown and take a little break. Are you going to stick around on the phone with us? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, because it's it's going to be silent for a few minutes while I'm on break because I got to run Not down the problem. run down the hallway. But uh, we'll <laughs> we'll keep you on the phone with us for afterward. Sounds like a plan. All right, here's this week's uh, comedy rundown brought to you by the legendary Wiley's Comedy Club at 101 Pine Street in downtown Dayton's historic Oregon district. Call 224-JOKE or go to Wiley'sComedy.com for all the best in Dayton comedy. Uh, Wednesday, tonight, April 4th, Comedy Fight Club, open mic at Ohio Chiefs at 1124 Leo Street in Dayton. That's hosted by Nate Washington, and I've heard really good things about that one. uh, You can sign up for stage time at 7.30 p.m. for that and go up and uh, be harassed while you're trying to tell jokes on purpose. Run the gauntlet Uh, with that one. (laughs) Exactly. Uh, Thursday through Sunday, April 5th through through April 8th, Jimmy J.J. Walker is going to be at uh, Dayton Funny Bone at 88 Plum Street at the Green. Uh, Thursday, March 29th. March 29th, Thursday, April uh, 5th. Why did I? Wow. Well, I'm, I'm trying to, uh, <laughs> that's from last week and I'm trying to, it's, because it's the same, it's open mic at the hookah bazaar. It's the same is, every week. Yeah. I just didn't change the date when I updated the, uh, the page here. Uh, <laughs> Thursday, April 5th, open mic at the, uh, at mug shots. Is it mug shots? I don't know. I'm losing my mind. It says a mugshot, so uh, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Go out and well, see. Well, there's usually you, I know, a mugshots and hooker are both yeah, on Thursday. Yeah, so. well, there's also open mic. I, I'm, I'm going to figure this out. I have to get back with you. Uh, also, Thursday, April 5th, uh, open mic at the Hookah Bazaar at 958 Patterson Road in Dayton. That show starts at 10 p.m. Sign-ups for that show are at 930 if you want some stage time. Uh, Friday, April 6th, Todd Link is at the Dayton Funny Bone. Also, Friday, April 6th, the first, first monthly Oregon District After Dark Comedy Show. Uh, by Feathers Vintage Clothing. That show starts at 10 p.m. on the streets of the Oregon District, which is always fantastic. Uh, Friday and Saturday, April 6th and 7th, uh, Jeff Oske is at the uh, 
Wiley's Comedy Club at 101 Pine Street in the Oregon District. And Sunday, April 8th, Wiley Sunday Comics is back at Wiley's Comedy Club. That show starts at 8 p.m. Uh, Luke Capasso is going to be headlining this Sunday. Mm-hmm. Uh, that is it. As always, check out Wiley's Comedy.com and DaytonFunnyBone.com for details and tickets to upcoming shows. Don't forget to show some love. I keep forgetting to put out there on Monday nights. We have open mics at Hannah's at 121 North Ludlow Street in Dayton and also at Ollie's at 518 Miamisburg Centerville Road. That's where that is, right? Absolutely. It's right down the road from where I work. I'm exactly. Gonna to, I'm going to have to leave for a long lunch and head down there sometime. Yeah. Uh, and next week at Wiley's uh, starts the uh, World Series of Comedy. That's a nationwide comedy contest that has its finals out in Las Vegas. And the legendary Wiley's Comedy Club is a satellite location, so go check it out April 11th through the 14th. You can uh, get information on that on uh, Wiley'sComedy.com. And that is it. We're going we're gonna to take a little break, and we will be back here shortly. I'm going to play some Potter's Field, and uh, Chris Mohan's going to stay on the line with us. We'll be back here shortly.
all right, all right. I'll tell you what to do. Go that way, really fast. If something gets in your way, turn. All right, we are back on the Life Radio Show. I'm your host, Don Smith. Uh, Chris Mohan, are you still with us? Yes, sir. Hey, Woo! still with us. We 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 survived <laughs> the break all intact. Uh, sitting yeah, in uh, exactly. my my guest co-host, uh, the 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 magnificent. I'm just coming up with all kinds of words. All right, the magnificent Mike Shea. Adjectives. <laughs> You're describing words, kids. Yes, yes. <laughs> and all lies, too, at that. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Where is the truth? <laughs> yeah, it's, it is It is not on uh, the not live yet. radio show. <laughs> so we, we were talking about family drama earlier, and uh, we should probably uh, get past that. <laughs> so so ha- how do you par- parents feel about you doing stand-up comedy? Uh. <laughs> They're, they're okay. Uh, my, really? my mom's my mom's okay. I've, I've never particularly had a, a very good relationship with my dad. Uh, it, it was it was a little hard. I think when my mom like realized that this was this was like a career choice, like this was like the full time gig for me. Uh, she had a little bit of a hard time coping with that because. You know, there's there's no there's no paycheck every week, right? right? Like you know, it's not like you get paid on uh, paid every Friday or whatever. Uh, so, so that means that you have to travel around the country like a vagabond, uh, <laughs> living out of your car from time to time, and and hope that you you make enough money to to pay your bills, which for the most part, you know, th- you 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 can. Uh, but but now she's you know it's been about about five years since we had this, this conversation the last time and, and just the last time it did not go well. Uh, uh, but, but now she's like, Oh, you know, what city are you in? Where's your show? Is it a good part of town? Do you have a place to stay? Uh, you know, are there nice people at the show? Don't curse so much on stage. <laughs> <laughs> Every <laughs> mom know, has like to that. throw that in. <laughs> Yeah, she doesn't. Uh, she's she's heard a couple of. Um, she hasn't come to see me live in in, in quite some time. Um, and, and every time that I like invite her to be like, "Hey, this is kind of a big deal show that I'm doing in Pittsburgh. Uh, do you want to come to it?" And she's usually like working or or whatever. But every time she'll like she'll ca- she'll she'll see my clips on YouTube that I throw up. Uh, and but it's always just hey. It's really good stuff, but do you have to, there's a lot of cursing happening. <laughs> <laughs> you know? That's that's all. Sometimes it's necessary. In, yeah, in life yeah. and in comedy. Absolutely. I I, uh, I was talking to somebody that was um, you know uh, they they run this political advocacy group in uh, it's like a nationwide group, but they have a chapter in Cincinnati, and they were talking to me about. Uh, you know, coming down and doing the show, and they were like, "Hey, some of the older people have a problem with a uh, particular four-letter word that starts with an F." And I was like, "It's okay. I don't have to say it all that much." But but there are certain times where saying that word has enough of an impact that the impact itself is funny, right? And, right. and that's that's what I'm looking for. Is is it necessary to say that word? And sometimes it is. Sometimes it's the perfect word because it articulates the the right feeling, uh, the right you know, the right mindset of what you what you were in when you wrote that bit, and you want to and you kind of want to communicate that with uh, with people. and And there's no other substitution uh, sometimes for for that particular four letter word. And I know that it can get uh, a little little dicey for people. Uh, so I try to do my best not to overuse it and be yeah. a little bit more creative about it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just a fantastic word though. It's so versatile. <laughs> oh yeah. 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 Right. That's that. I think that's, that's sort of the best part about that word is, is that it is versatile and uh, there, there are different ways that you can use it. And I think it's, it's one of those, uh, it's one of those words that has so many different contexts and so many different meanings to it. Yeah, uh, I, I still it, think you know, we should be able to use it on the air, but you know, but the station manager doesn't—he doesn't approve of it. <laughs> Apparently, he doesn't want, like paying the fine. Yeah, but 
sometimes it is the word you have to use. And I keep trying to explain that to my boss. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. He doesn't like it either, but you know, sometimes it's the perfect expression of frustration or, uh, or excitement or shock. Uh, you know, there's just, so like walking out of the theater after watching a really good movie and just exclaiming that word, sure, in the, in a crowded movie theater, maybe don't say that word so yeah. much, you know, because there might be children around, right, but there right, might not right. be any other words to describe the, the, the film that you saw because it was that good, you know? Yeah, like I mean, if it's a children's movie, it's even <laughs> less appropriate. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> if you're walking out but, of a Disney Disney movie, you should probably refrain from the four letter words. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but it also might have been a really good children's movie. That's so. true. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Did you see that? <laughs> see, I work in television. I work at a news station, and so we're you know we're not allowed to say that word on the air, like right. like with radio, but. A lot of the anchors and reporters have been like, man, if I couldn't use that word off the air <laughs> as many times as you wanted to say it on the air, we'd just go crazy. Yeah, yeah. right? What? Yeah. I, like, I was, like I was telling uh, Mike, I said it a couple times last night because uh, where I work, they tried to put, make me go up on the roof during a tornado. No. So, <laughs> well, so that is yeah. an appropriate use of that word. That is a, yeah, that, there is no other word. When somebody's saying, hey, go on the roof. <laughs> during a tornado i don't think uh well g willikers is really yeah. gonna cut it yeah. oh, you know? go- I don't golly think it mister this. <laughs> golly <laughs> mister i really don't think i should <laughs> oh goose feathers <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, right. some things just don't work as well <laughs> yeah the cable substitutions aren't the right the right words for that <laughs> right that right <laughs> but when, when i when i first started uh performing comedy i really i didn't use it very often in fact yeah. i was i had usually the the fairly clean set mm-hmm. and i remember one time i finally got but I, I was in church i went to church at the time <laughs> I, I i finally got a group from church to go to one of my shows and it was the is still the raunchiest open mic i've ever been to my set was squeaky clean there was one other guy <laughs> right. that was fairly clean and the rest of them were just oh it was awful so <laughs> that always yeah. that oddly enough they've never come to see me again that always happens whenever my mother comes to a show when my mom comes to a show everyone's decided we're gonna just gonna go full blue tonight yeah. <laughs> so that i gotta go home to my mom and she's kind of like well that was that was interesting <laughs> well my mom's used to it so yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah um my uh, my mom came to an open mic uh maybe six seven years ago and it, it wasn't the best open mic. It was just the only night that she had off. And so I was like, why don't we go to this open mic? And I was, da- I, you know, I was dating a, a girl at the time. And I was like, why don't we, we all go to this open mic? We'll all hang out for a little bit. I'll go do my set. And then, and then we can go and like hang out and get, you know, like a coffee or tea or whatever. And basically like, and, and I told my mom, like, don't sit up front because you're going to get picked on. And of course, she sits right up front. Uh, so it's so like my mom and my then girlfriend, and they and like so I'm up like fourth or fifth at that point. And there, so there's five, there's four four or five comics in front of me, and it's like the whole room is just like, can we make Chris's mom laugh? And <laughs> and my mom is an incredibly polite person, but she's not a big laugher. Uh, she's just never been like a big laugher. Uh, like I've I've known my mom to like, uh, you know, have these big outbursts of laughter very few times in my life. Uh, so like, she's not laughing a lot. But there was uh, there was always these moments where the comics would be like, "Well, gotta laugh out of Chris's mom. That's the end of my set." And yeah. like, oh, all right. <laughs> yep, that's the measure. Yeah, yeah my- but I was um, I was also a pretty clean comic. Um, because you can't curse in high school, right? Right. Like well, yeah. That, I mean, I did, but you know. I used to be the cleanest comedian in, I didn't in go South on Carolina stage at that time. But because because I was right. doing high school shows, so mm-hmm. I, I first five years doing stand up, I didn't curse at all because I hadn't written anything I could curse in because I knew I wasn't going to be allowed to say it. So yeah, yeah. yeah. I I started um, yeah, and a lot of the a lot of the mics that I was doing were like coffee shop mics. So it was like all ages and, you you know, you, like they, they would be like, if you're going to talk about some adult things or, or if you feel like you're going to say some 
certain words to just let people know when you're on stage, hey, this might get a little blue, blah, blah, blah. And I, and I never felt like any of my stuff was doing that. Um, I do remember <laughs> somebody told me that I should have given them a warning because <laughs> I went on stage and I like, I, uh, I had this like six minute rant about, uh, serial commercials. I, I wrote this bit when I was like 17 or something. Uh, it's still, it's still one of those bits where I'm like, that's really cool that I attacked advertising at age 17 and didn't even know that I was doing that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I, but I had this like six minute rant about how like serial commercials don't, uh, teach children the, the right values. Right. And, uh, and I and I went off on it, and then at the end of my set, uh, this person came up to me, and they were like, it was just, like, you didn't say anything bad or curse or anything. It was just aggressive, and if you're going to do that again, just let us know that you're going to be a little aggressive. <laughs> so we, <laughs> wow. Yeah. Uh, very, it was very sweet. Uh, but, yeah, I never, I didn't, um, I don't think I started cursing till I started coming out to, like, like comedy open mics, you know, yeah, that, which are, which are usually it. at dive bars, you know. Yeah, that'll that'll do it to you for sure. <laughs> yeah, because how else are you gonna? You know, it's like there, there's a, there's maybe five or six people watching you uh, that are there for the open mic, but then it, you're contending with, uh, you know, seven or eight people at a bar that are just there after work to have a drink before they head home, uh, yeah. and here we are trying to like. Do our jokes. Yep. And, D- and disturbing it, their peace of mind. <laughs> right. And so the only way that you can get their attention or get them to stop talking was sometimes you had to curse. Uh, so, so that's when I broke my system of being like this uh, clean comic that was going to, uh, you know, do these uh, kitchen little stories and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and, and then I, I kind of went back to it. As, I think I, I did, like, I used to just tell a lot of stories. That's just what I'm, you know, like, doing the long-form type of stuff is just right. what I've been more comfortable doing. Um, but, yeah, I, I would I would tell these stories, and, and a majority of them were, they, there were no curse words in them. So, I, <laughs> for, for about two years, I think I was, like Pittsburgh's cleanest comic or something like that. <laughs> uh, anytime that anybody would, would be booking a show or a fundraiser or something, and they would ask somebody to be like, Hey, who's your, um, who's, who's the cleanest comic, you know, uh, you know, they would be like, Oh, it's Chris. Like Chris is the cleanest comic. We know. Yeah. That's a good uh, way to get shows though. Mm-hmm. You do, uh, you, you get shows and, uh, it, it, it was it was a nice challenge to see like how to keep audiences that are more used to just a shorter like set up punch like da 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 you know those kind of jokes. How do you keep them uh, attentive and focused on uh, on stories and longer and longer sets? Um, so so you know, I, when I first started, it was like I built up my chops talking about the immigrant experience at coffee shops. And then eventually it's like translating all of my little outsider fringy ideas into, into bar shows to like VFWs and fundraisers. Uh, and then, and then, you know, so it was like building up to how do you talk to, how do you talk to people in, in various different parts of the country um, and staying true to who you are and, uh, and doing the material that you want to do. So it's like all of this stuff was escalating and building to, to doing the type of comedy that I'm doing now. Yeah, that, uh, that would be a challenge, especially the way the way a lot of things are in this country right now. That would be a challenge to get. It, it seems like more and more people that are less interested in another person's perspective or experience on things. Yeah, uh, that's that's. Yeah, I've gotten a lot more conservatives and people on the right to come come to the comedy show, um, and, and you know it's like talking about somebody like uh, uh, my my fiance's uncle, who's a conservative, might say some things uh, that you know he he read in a magazine or something, and he's just kind of that's 
oh, I read so this must be the validating opinion because I read this in, in magazine X Y Z. Um, because of that, they don't want to they don't want to hear him out anymore, right? And, right. Uh, to, and to to me, it's like the the left or you know the the liberal side or, or whatever ends up kind of getting upset because you're like, hey, these aren't bad people, and they want to label them as bad people. Um, it's it's, easy, it's easier that way. It's, it's very easy that way. Yeah, the, I, the complexity think, I, of the human condition is, is yeah. <laughs> boiled down into one word. Right. <laughs> you know. I, I, th- I think it's. Uh, I think sometimes it just seems easier to dislike the person than to formulate a good argument to the idea. Yeah, so the shortcut that, that is to trickier. discredit the person, and I think that's yeah. which a is, lot of where we are. Which is in and of itself a fallacy. So it's right. kind of right. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I, and and I don't see any value in in doing that at all. Uh, you know, I I, I want to try to understand where people are coming from and. And the real important thing is, why do you believe what you believe? That that becomes very important for me, because to me, the way that I process all that information is through the lens of comedy, right? So why do I believe what I believe, and why is that important to me? Um, <clears throat> and then if I can communicate that through through the through the vehicle of comedy, it, it's it, you know things start to make sense. So. That's what I want people to to be able to do in general. I think I think that's the easiest thing is like, why do you believe what you believe? And if you have a valid reason, and if there's some arguments against that, that's okay. You don't have to agree with them, but at least know that there there are reasons why other people believe what they believe, and and there there can be this coexistence in the world. Uh, but yeah it, the the divide that we're in kind of doesn't allow you to ask those questions and doesn't allow you to uh, see and understand other people's perspectives and I think that's I don't think that's productive at all no. <laughs> well that, that's that's one one of the things about the the vehicle of comedy that you meant you know that's one of the things is it helps people let their guard down a little bit so they can even accidentally let some other ideas slip in mm-hmm. now and then. yeah mm-hmm. absolutely yeah um it, the, the, one of the most entertaining things for me is when uh, when my future father-in-law will come to see shows because I know we don't see eye to eye on everything, but we're pretty amicable uh, amicable about it because uh, nobody likes it when we're sitting at the dinner table screaming at each other, right? Uh, or or, or, or completely silent. That's not good either. <laughs> That's not, yeah. The polar opposites are aren't aren't really good, but it's. It's always interesting when he comes to, you know, to see me perform or uh, or to, or to see my fiance perform because she's a musician. Um, because he'll always listen to certain things, and you know, he'll be like, "Oh, you you brought up this thing about immigration. I never thought about it that way." <laughs> right. You know, so. So he might not particularly laugh, and and in the comics brain, it's like, "Oh no." He hates this, and uh, and he's having a real bad time. But if if we're trying to bridge divides and, and use comedy to you know break down the the barrier of, uh, of of sacred, and it's okay to laugh at at some of these uh, some of these issues and find some hope uh, within it. And somebody is like, "Oh, I never thought about it that way." You know, they'll probably come back to see you again to see if they can process that joke like process the humor behind what you're saying. But when it's, when it's a new thought that, that has never entered their head before, like, uh, of course they're going to take it. It's going to, you know, they're going to take a step back and be like, Oh, well, that's interesting. You know? <laughs> like, yeah. Well, it's, it's been great talking to you. We're about to have to I take would. our top of the hour break and get our next guest in, but I'll definitely get a hold of you and we'll, we'll try to get you to call back in before the show on uh, South park. If you'd like. Sounds like a plan. That sounds wonderful. Thank you for having me. All right. Not a problem. Now, that's uh, South Park Tavern at 1301 Wayne Avenue in Dayton. You're going to be there April 17th? 19th. 19th. April 19th. Let me write that down. That way I don't forget again. All right. <laughs> April 19th, South Park Tavern. Chris awesome. Mohan, thanks a lot for calling in. It was great to, get to, uh, great to get to talk to you for a little while. Yeah. Thank you very much for having me. Yep. Thank you. All right. Let's go ahead and take a little break. 
at the top of the hour before uh, before the FCC complains that we're not taking, that we're not taking enough breaks. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> we will be back here shortly with uh, Aaron Phillips Woo! sitting in sitting in the hot seat. Thanks for listening to the Life Podcast. Check us out on Eventide Entertainment's Podcast Network. Remember, if you want to listen live, we're on Wednesdays from noon to 2 p.m. on WWSU 106.9 FM, or you can always stream the show live at WWSU1069.org. If you have suggestions or comments for the show, feel free to email us at thelife1069 at gmail.com. When somebody's saying, hey, go on the roof during a tornado, <laughs> I don't think, uh, well, gee, Willikers is really yeah. going to cut it. Yeah. Oh, you know, God, I don't golly, think it mister. This. <laughs>